All right, this is Michael Rappaport, and you are listening to the I Am Rappaport podcast, Al Pacino line of the week. We're going right back to Scarface. There's so many fucking lines from Scarface, which if you didn't know, again, the, 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 the film Scarface was written by director Oliver Stone. A young Oliver Stone wrote the script for Scarface, um, and it's just, I mean, shit. The movie speaks for itself. I, 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 there's so if you've never seen Scarface, I don't know what to tell you. But the we're gonna do Tony Montana late in the film. The pressure's on, and uh, he kills the guy. And uh, you know he tells him, "I never fucked anybody over in my life that didn't have it coming to them." You got that? All I have in this world is my balls and my word, and I don't break them for no one. All right, right there, I could I could stop because that line's been quoted by rappers many, many fucking times. This film has been quoted by rappers, and I, I wonder how many Scarface name drops have been on 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 rap, on rap albums, hip hop albums, gangster rap albums. Fucking Scarface, the rapper, named himself Scarface because of this film. Jay Z on one of my favorite Jay Z songs. Uh, he says Scarface the movie did more than Scarface the rapper to me uh, on ignorant shit him and him and Benny Siegel I never fucked anybody over in my life that didn't have it coming to them you got that all I have in this world is my balls in my world and I don't break them for no one you understand that piece of shit up there I never liked him I never trusted him for all I know he had me set up and had my friend Angel Fernandez killed but that's history I'm here he's not you want to go on with me you say you don't then you make a move that is the Pacino line of the week. The Al Pacino line of the week from the classic film Scarface. It doesn't get any fucking better than that performance. That movie. It is so much going on in Scarface. Matter of fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch Scarface tonight so I can come back with another Pacino line of the week from Scarface on the next episode. All right. This is the I Am Rappaport podcast. Coming live from the gloom tomb, many of my man G Moody. Yes, yes. We are, you can find us everywhere. You can find us on Play It, iTunes, TuneIn, Spotify. Uh, if we're not on Spotify yet, we're going to be on Spotify soon. You can find us, check out the website, IamRappaport.com. We have a website. I, we don't sell anything. We don't hawk anything. Okay, uh, we just are doing it for the love. We're doing it for the people. We, we go hardcore. We go raw dog without a bag. It's the I Am Rapport podcast. We're not fucking around here. No. Okay, we're not fucking around here. Hell no. No, right, G Moody? No way. <laughs> no, we're not fucking around. <laughs> we're, we're, we're not playing games here and shit. Okay, um, so me, me and G Moody, we've been sort of, you know, going back and forth on, on the past and the current. And, and you're from, it's something, you know, that I wanted to ask you about, G Moody, is uh, again, and, and we, we can't make any lighthearted thing about the, the tragedy. It just hurts my heart what happened in Charleston, South Carolina. It, you know, you think about that kind of thing and, and, and that kind of terror and that kind of craziness and that kind of hate. And, 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 you know, like there's been the debate, is it a terrorist crime? Is it a hate crime? You know, it's, it's, it's a crime of, of, of insanity. You can't put a finger on these things. Mm-mm. It's one thing to say things. It's one thing. But when you are like in, in that, like, like, is he crazy? Is he easy? Is, is it? Ins- He's everything. He's every fucking thing. That guy that shot those people in the church is everything to try to lay. That's the thing about craziness. You can't label it. Just call it that, yeah. and, and, and 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 whatever that word means to you, that's what somebody that would do something at that church in South Carolina, or some person that carries out an act of violence like that, horrendous, horrendous violence. It doesn't. There's no need to give it a. There is no proper label, and arguing over it is is is. Is in, especially somewhere like this with the race stuff, like uh, black people are saying it's this, white people are saying it's that. There's no debate, mm-hmm. ladies and gentlemen and children. There's no debate. We, we this is the last thing that people need to uh, figure out. This is a horrible, crazy, just hateful, sick person. More than anything, is a sick fuck. 
And not in a good way, like the sick fuck of the week who won uh, the award last week, who's a sick fuck, but obviously not a murderer. The gentleman uh, down in Alabama who we yeah. mentioned. who Brutalized was, the dog. He was raping yeah. his dog. The, uh, people are like, wait, what do you, you got a segue? He, his uh, shih tzu dog, his, his 10 pound shih tzu dog, he was fucking it. And, and his wife caught him on videotape because she thought she was, he was uh, fucking another woman. Well, surprise. Surprise. And, and I wonder if the dog was even female. Like, no, he wasn't fucking a woman. He was actually, he was fucking a, a male dog. Oh. That's who you've been living with. Jesus. So, so we're not, so this South Carolina thing, but your family's from South Carolina. And, and, and you, you, you know, you spent a lot of time in South Carolina, in yes. Eddie Stowe, South Carolina. I've never been down there. And obviously Charleston is a city, but it's close to, I mean. I know where that street is where that should happen. Okay, so, so, so what did you want to say about South and the Confederate? I've never seen a Confederate flag. A Confederate flag is the symbol of slavery. And you have to understand, we're in the, you're in the South, it's different, and it's probably, different. I, th I think there are some listeners who, and I, I've never been, I've never lived down there. You gotta, I, you gotta so, understand how, you know, they view the black people that they're around. As, now, you have to understand that for most of our history here, we've been owned. Right. So, in the South, it's, it was very like brutal for, for black people. So they look at us in the South not as a full citizen, not as, you know, we still have their name. We still have those names, Jackson, Williams, Moody, me. So they don't look at you as anything but, and that brings me back to what I'm saying, that hatred is woven into the fabric. Right, the culture. Of the United States. The United Paula States. Paula Dean. They had to, have I mean, you ever look about said that nigger. fucking judge? The fucking judge on this case. Look at this it. guy uh, in South Carolina. Uh, he he said the vic there are there are nine. Of course, there are nine victims on this. But it, it, this is the right right away. I, they, there's maybe some time that's appropriate to acknowledge the, the 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 family. But the next day to like go out of your way, he says there are nine victims, and then goes on a three a three uh, sentence thing about. Worrying about this guy's family, who apparently, obviously, the family didn't didn't take the actions, uh, but 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 they're, apparently the father's the one who gave him the gun. Still, no reason he there, there shouldn't be compassion. But for that judge to go on a diatribe, diatribe is that a fucking word? Yeah, it's a word. Diatribe. Yeah, you said it right. I'm, I'm guessing. We don't know. We don't know shit. We don't fact check. But but for that <laughs> but for that judge to 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 do that just goes to show. And and I mean that judge. He's like cold hearted. That's a white motherfucking guy. That's that's white folks. That's that slave master mentality. Not you. This doesn't apply to you. You know, we don't look at you like that. You know, these are one of our guys, but it happened to you. Right. You see? That's that slave. We in the South. Yo. We they, in this fucking South. And now they're saying this dude. Wanted to set off a race war. I mean, there, there's now they're saying all kinds of things. And, and, and where am I getting my fucking That's news from? That's terrorism. It, is that terrorism or is it hate? Or it's terrorism, man, because in the history of this country, we have, we've had a lot of shit where they was burning churches down and killing folks in churches. This is not unusual. Right. For the United States. It's right. not against the black citizens. It's Four always girls, been terrorism. That Spike man. Lee documentary. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's always terrorism. <sighs> against the black citizens. Uh, this uh, is and, and, and we're a, a transracial. We consider us, are, are we transracial? No, no. We mm. can't be. I want to be something. No. I'm Tran black, you Jewish, man. I know, we but we're on that bullshit. We're transracial. <laughs> I feel like if we consider, if we say we're the first transracial podcast, it, it could do wonders for the podcast. Look what it did for Bruce, and look what it did for fucking Dolzell. Like these, she's got a fucking book deal or something already. Reality show. She got two reality shows in the works. Okay, and we're sitting here in the fucking yeah. gloom tomb. So I'm saying, if we say we're a transracial podcast, let's fucking listen. Let's do it. Our viewers won't yeah. tell. They could be in on it with us, or they could witness be like, yes. They changed. We're transracial. Can we can we do something? If Dozell. What does she have, like a hair show? 
<laughs> what I kind guess? of shit? They're offering her all kind of shit. Yeah, all kind of fly shit. Will they wind up like, will BET, Bravo, like, will she... She gonna want to be on BET. Yeah, she's she, gonna want to be on BET. She'll turn NBC, down MSNBC. A- NBC could come with big bucks, but she's like, I'm so black. Yeah, I'm going I'm to... I'm so bout it, bout it. Yeah, she'll say that in all in the meetings. I'm about about it. Yeah, we not going. We on BET, girl. Yeah, we be there, but there, but NBC's offer you fifteen thousand dollars a month more. No, but wait, you're, maybe you're not understanding. You can make more money if you're on NBC. No, that's not for that's not for me. That's for, I want my people to see my show. Okay, all right. So that was uh, us interviewing Rachel Dozel and why she decided to do her her show on uh, BET as opposed to NBC. So I, I did this once when I had my, my young guns, Dean Collins and Logan Lehrman, and I was think, trying to think of like some of the dopest shit that we've got to do and experience over the years. So what would be some like we, me and Joe, we've sat many courtside seats uh, for Knicks games, but you, you know, have we ever went to a, a good Knicks game? I, I feel yeah. like what what Knicks game do we go to? With that was good. Jordan in '86 with we, Ice Gervin. Okay, but we Jordan in '86 with Ice Gervin. We snuck down. There was no one at the game. Yep. Or there were people at the game, but somehow me and G Moody at the at, at the Garden on Madison Square, we made it to like the scorers table, yep. like the reporters table. We were sitting there. We watched the second half of the game from the, and it was Jordan's first year or second year. Second year. And we watched from from the court side at the scorers table. We watched uh, George Gervin and Michael Jordan play. What, what, what do we remember? I remember that. Remember that, right? Yeah, you could smell weed in the garden. Like yep. people were smoking weed in the garden. Like it was bugged out. Yeah. But like we watched Jordan and Gervin play, and Gervin was like, "Ooh, ah." Mike was shitting on somebody, and George Gervin was like, just enjoying it. Yeah. And then we could, heard George go, "Ooh, ah, yeah, go don't get do him, it, Mike." Yeah. He was. He he. What did he say? He said, "Ooh, ah, don't do it, Mike. Don't like, do it." He was loving watching him play, and George Gervin was at the end of his career, but he was still doing his shit. Yeah. But we. This was Jordan. Like, you know, he wasn't super duper star. He had the sneakers and all that yep. shit. And we watched that game second. I put that as a as a I am Rappaport podcast historical. Mountaintop moment, top moment. Uh, what what would be one you would you would pick? Oh, fuck. I mean, when we were we, you think of one, but I I could just tell you the whole trip. Gerald was with me from the whole trip of filming beautiful girls in Minnesota. And, and if you never saw that film, it's a movie that I'm in with Natalie Portman, Matt Dillon, Uma Thurman in her prime, Rosie O'Donnell, uh, Martha Plimpton. Uh, shit. There's a Timothy Hutton. All stars. And, 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 directed by uh, the late, great Ted Demi. And, and we were out there going fucking nuts in Minnesota. <laughs> Word. Now, now, you could just use your imagination in terms of what we were going with. But let's just say this. I mean, we were young. I mean, uh, no, not drugs. Me and Moody are not drugs. I, like, fuck no. I, I, I didn't even, uh, I didn't even drink at the time. Right, right. You don't fuck around. You I don't drink yeah. now. <laughs> Uh, and I never. Here's a straight up thing. I've never. Have you? I've never tried cocaine. Uh, G Moody ever tried cocaine? Fuck no. Why I've never I tried any pills, no. any mollies. None I don't. I, I drink rarely. Uh, on the set of Beautiful Girls, the first time I ever got drunk, as a matter of fact, the first time I ever drank alcohol. It's a, a story I'll tell on another episode. Uh, but it was with Ted Demi, Matt Dillon, and, and, and Timothy Hutton. I'll wow. tell that story. It's the first time I ever got drunk. Wow. And I could tell you the scenes we were shooting and the whole experience of that. But 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 so when we say we were going nuts out there, we weren't doing it with drugs and and. Gerald would drink a little bit, but he's not a big, big, big drinker. Nope. Um, it was, it, so usually it's drugs, um, uh, alcohol, and women. Right. And, 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 and that's the part that I... <laughs> we were young. We were young. We were yeah. like, what, what year was that? 90, 25, 26. 25, 26. Yeah. So we were out there in Minnesota, and, and the women out there were just so friendly. Very nice. And we were there for like two or three months, and I was working on this movie, and it was great. Everything was fantastic. And we had this rented apartment somewhere downtown in Minneapolis. In Minneapolis and we Woo. would go to this club called the Glam Slam, which was owned by Prince. Ooh. And, and, and we would go there a couple of times a week, and, and we would be with women and pick them up. This this is not strip club. This is a disco, Regular like club. a disco. Like, yeah. and they play hip hop and soul and all shit. And the NBA players would come to that club. So the team, the the local NBA players, they had J.R. Ryder playing for the Timberwolves at that time. Yeah. Um, was KG on that team? Yeah, KG was there. Yeah. I never saw him at the club, but we would see the people from the uh, uh, opposing teams. I remember uh, I met Mitch Richmond. Remember we saw Mitch Richmond in the club. Fucking with him. Yeah. Mitch Richmond. We saw you in the club in Minnesota, and you had on. Um, <laughs> What the fuck did you have on? He had on some motherfucking stoned wash 
He had a stoned wash jean suit. <laughs> and this is when, if you were not, uh, if you were from New York, stone wash was the thing of the 80s. Uh, so to see Mitch Richmond in the club, and he was one of those barrel chest big motherfuckers. Yeah. He's about 6'5", but he was like built like a football player. And I remember seeing Mitch Richmond in the club with a full stone wash outfit being like, God damn, damn Mitch. Yeah. He was with the Kings at the time, right? Yep, yep. And you, he his outfit was so fucked up and out of date as far as I'm concerned. But we talked to him. He knew who I was. We were like, yo, yeah, shit. Yep. Like Mitch, Mitch Richmond is a Hall of Famer. Absolutely. M Mitch Richmond gave Michael Jordan fits. Yeah. He Mitch. was a physical guard. But to see him in the club, there was nothing dope about him other than the it fact was, that he was Mitch Richmond because he looked crazy in a, yeah. in, a, in, a, in a blue stonewash top to bottom shit. Oh, who, who else? So we go to this club. Um, I remember being in a club. Here's a good story. Here's an okay. NBA story. We were hanging out with J.R. Ryder. Right. Uh, Isaiah Ryder, slam dunk champ winner. I remember it was his birthday. So whenever J.R. Ryder's birthday is, it, it at midnight it turned. It was a Saturday night at midnight. It, it, the next day, that Sunday was his birthday. And I remember we were in the club till 3.30 in the morning <laughs> with J.R. Ryder right. at the Glam Slam. And again, the women out there were just... Just, just, just fucking phenomenal. Nice women. And yeah. uh, I had never seen white girls with asses like they had. White, listen, I don't know if they still have it. Mm. But there was white girls with fat asses. Hormones. They doing it good. Boy. Like milk fed. And yeah. they were like in the club with fat ass. Remember, we, we saw that. for the. That's why I saw it. Like, you'd see it every now and then in New York and L.A., but it was like consistent. It was like, yo, these yo. girls have fat asses. Yeah. Not Kardashian fat. Like real, real, real asses. Real flesh. Real asses. Yeah. But that night, we were in the club with, with J.R. Ryder until 3.30 in the morning. Uh, celebrating his birthday, and the next day they had a twelve thirty or one thirty game, and he hit forty three. Right, I saw that, and I was like, "This motherfucker." We left the club at three thirty, and he was still in the club. Damn, Jr. Ryder was a motherfucker. Yeah, and and then Christian Leitner played for that Minnesota Timberwolves team, and I saw him like heckle with a fan and like kind of get in a fan's face. Like we'd go to the games and shit. Yeah. Like that was a good time making that movie Beautiful Girls. We had a lot of fun out there making that movie Beautiful Girls. So so, so go ahead. I asked you um, about uh, mountaintop moments or some shit. Like we said, Jordan watching Jordan uh, making Beautiful Girls. Go ahead. Uh, just going to Union Square. And seeing all the bur you know burgeoning hip hop scene come out. Articulate what Union Square was. It was a club in uh, Manhattan in Union Square. Union Square, Fourteenth like, Street. Yeah, and it was hip hop club, and people from Brooklyn all over the five boroughs would come there and just chill, hip hop. No, 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 not chill. You, 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 it was at nighttime, and 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 it would be, and, and they didn't serve alcohol in the club. So that's why we went there when we were. I was fifteen. You were sixteen. Yep. And 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 but the thing is, there were also grown ups, grown men, men. And grown ass women. It was just like, but not like grown like thirty, like twenty five, like big strong yep. motherfuckers with like sideburns and shit, yep. and, and real women like they were in there and shit with teenagers. Yeah. I don't know how, how the fuck, fuck we got in there, <laughs> but the first time we went to Union Square, there was a line down the block, and and I hate to make this like my badge of honor because it's really not. I'm just I'm trying to paint a picture. I was the only white person in the club besides MC Search. That's and right. I remember but when we got out, like, we were at this club, there was motherfuckers from Brooklyn, the Bronx, uh, oh. Harlem, Queens, like, it was, it was, motherfuckers were there to party. Intense. People were getting robbed. Somebody tried to literally one time in there, tried to dig my fucking pockets. <laughs> they put their hand in my, and then my people were like, yo, what the fuck are you yeah, doing? Yeah, yo, chill. We saw women get their fucking earrings Earing snatched. snatched every week, like, Brooklyn. Not, not just once. You'd see it multiple times in one night. Yep. And they were playing, like, and Red Alert, DJ Red Alert would be in there DJing. Who, did, did anyone else DJ in there? I, we just saw Red. Red was the one. I yeah. mean, there had to be other DJs, but DJ Red Alert. And we, we, you know, you'd see, like, rappers in there and shit. Like, you'd see Big Daddy Kane. You'd see Bismarck. And they wouldn't be, there was no VIP. You'd yeah. be amongst them. Hell yeah. It was crazy. And, yeah. then, and then same thing with Latin Quarters. Latin Quarters, the same club that uh, it's been around for years. And, and then it be it had a hip-hop night on a Saturday night. And, and, and this is Latin Quarters, if you may have heard of it more recently because that's the club where Plaxico Burris oh. walked into the club with his, a gun and his sweatpants and shot himself. It shot himself. You dumb fuck. You dumb fuck. <laughs> Imagine that. Plaxico Burris. 
You dumb fuck you. He's like, I'm, I, he's in the mirror at home. When I get in the club, I'm gonna fuck them niggas up, man. Them niggas ain't gonna do shit to me. And then you shoot yourself. Who did we say made Plaxico Burris look like a fucking road scholar? Aaron Hernandez. Oh, right. <laughs> right. Aaron Hernandez makes Plaxico Burris look like the guy who fucking invented ice cream. You're so, I mean, I mean, obviously they're, you're sick, but but dumb factors yeah. into it. Yeah, you gotta, you can't, you can't leave that out. But so, but when we would go to this club, I remember being in the club one night. I saw this with my own eyes in Latin quarters. Well, first of all, we would see salt and pepper in there. When there's salt and pepper, KRS was rocking. With KRS salt. won. The and bridge then, is and over. the club wasn't big, so after they got off stage, you'd be in there. And it's like, oh they shit, they're right there. They're dancing. right there, yeah. and we're 15, 16, like. Yeah, you, there, there's no picture taken because no one has. But you'd be in there. I remember getting like having a, like a, like a Coca Cola with salt and pepper and like talking to them, finessing Sinquis. Yeah, remember them? They were on the Uptown label. Yeah, I was like, I I got her number. That was like a huge yeah. fucking deal. Was it finesse or Sinquis? Sinquis. Yo, I got her number. She was from Queens. I don't remember her name. I don't, I don't I think it was. I really, remember that. And, I, and she gave me her phone number yeah. in the club, and it was like as if. Yo, I found twenty met twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> like getting her number, she gave that. me her number. First of all, it's hard enough to get anyone's number at that time. Right. You're sixteen. You don't know how to talk. To I was probably fifteen. I probably just got my first piece of ass like a year ago. But you're in there with women and like Vanessa and Quish. They were in that uptown, yep, uptown that, yep. with with Heavy D and um, Aaron Harrell and who else was in that fucking video. Anyway, they, they were they were a group that had a couple of songs, Vanessa and Sin Quiz. Yeah, uh, and and I got Soul her fu- I got her yeah. fucking phone number, and it, I, I, and I never closed the deal. We never hooked out. She probably like I, I just wasn't. She was probably a kid too. But we would be in there. I remember seeing this with my own eyes. A huge fight broke out, and this is the last time I went there. No, actually, I went there again afterwards. But this is one of the last times because the fights were so fucking bad, and this is. Right after Howard Beach, so you, I would see crazy shit, and I was like mm. a white dude in this club, and I was the the I, I again, I hate this isn't a badge of honor, but I was the only white motherfucker right. in the club. And sometimes you used to go, and I'd be like, yo, I'm not going. Yeah, I'd go by myself at a certain point. King Sun, I remember. You remember King Sun? Yeah. Hey love, hey love, hey love. Yo, King Sun got me in the Latin quarters when I, when they were fronting on me, and then when I ran into King Sun about five years ago, he remembered getting wow. me because I, he I, I, and he this one King Sun he rock, rock walk around with that like we're going deep into some hip hop shit, shit yo. like yo if you don't know who these people are look them up like we're, we're I'm not trying to be exclusive at all like yo we're going into some deep I want everyone to understand. Like we're painting. I hope I'm painting a good enough picture of it because yeah. we're not trying to be like we're so cool because we're, we 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 I we're wanna, not cool. We we just telling you experience. But I remember I saw a huge fight break out, and 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 I remember I was standing right next to. He was on the left of me, Scott LaRock, right. and and in front of me I saw a dude. I swear on my kids, I saw a dude pull out of his sheepskin jacket a machete. Wow. Like a sword. And when we saw that, I was like, oh, shit. And I fucking left. And you'd walk down the steps, probably the same flight of steps that Plaxico Burst shot himself in. What if Plaxico Burst would have shot himself in the dick? He's lucky he didn't shoot his dick right, off. Right, right. Oh, anyway, so I walked down the stairs, and I, I needed my coat because it was winter, and you would check your coat because you, you didn't want to be hot in the club. I think it was like mandatory to check your coat. Right. Except for the guy with the sheepskin. Right. He obviously didn't check his coat because he took out a machete. And then when I came down, somebody tried to bash a, 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 a bottle uh, over the person next to me head and, oh. and, and it busted on their shoulder and the glass got on me. So now, like, fucking... talk about bitching out. Like, I'm like, my body's shaking. Right. My, my body's literally shaking. So I'm in a corner cowering, cowering with a woman, <laughs> a girl. Girl, we're, I'm 15, I'm 16 at this point. Uh-huh. I'm 16 years old. So soft. And, and, and I had no business being in here. I'm cowering in the corner. So finally, that little ruckus stops. And me and the girl get up. We don't know each other. It's like, it's like we're under attack. <laughs> it was like in a fucking war. It's like literally being under attack. And I go to go downstairs. This might be, the, this, this is the second flight of steps. Maybe this is the one where plaques go burst. You dumb fuck you. Yeah. Shot himself. And I swear with my own two eyes, I saw a guy get out of a car with a revolver and go boom, boom, boom. Oh. I saw that with my own fucking eyes. I just went out to go hear some fucking music. 
You told me that the next day. Yo, it fucking you was shattered. Yo, it fucked me up you so saw that. I yeah. saw that with my own fucking eyes. Yeah. Now I'm 16. Wow. That's fucking insane. This is happening in Times Square in Manhattan. And I'm seeing this. Right. This is not something I heard about. Like I am fucking seeing I, this. Yeah. Ooh, but, I mean, it was crazy. But yeah. we would see Stetsasonic in the club. We would be amongst them. Yeah. I remember they first dropped Public Enemy. Public yeah. Enemy number one. Yep. Yeah. They were like, damn it. Stetson had it. a show, yeah. Stetson Sonic had a show. Yeah. W what do you remember about being in those clubs? Like, what, what is like the little shit you remember? Trying to keep your ass safe. <sighs> so nobody would fuck with you. Nobody, yeah, that was always a big thing. Right. Don't wander off. Yeah. And then, like, it, but when we first went in there, I it was met just you my and me man. From Brownsville. And then we were safe. What was his name? Khalif. Right. I said, we good. Yeah, Khalif ha 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 he had... He held us down. He held us we, down. People got to understand, we're little kids. <laughs> we're little kids. And you're a little kid with a little white kid <laughs> who's probably got on, like, I have a nice jacket on. Yeah, yeah. Hell like, the yeah. jacket is like, you're not leaving with the jacket, money yep. grip. Like, motherfuckers, like, see that. People went there to rob people. Yeah, Brooklyn. Anybody will tell you who was in these clubs, they went there to rob... The Bronx was no fucking joke either. Brooklyn but, was known, they are known for going to the club to do that. Hence, Brook, uh, Biggie Small saying that Brooklyn bullshit. We on it. Yeah, they, they that's, that's what that means. They prided them shit. That, yeah. That, and now Brooklyn is gentrified. I wonder if that Brooklyn bullshit exists. Not that it should. See, I'm not like one of these guys in the city and be like, oh, the old days are better. Because there's a lot of yeah. things about the old days that were fucking whack. fucked up. Yeah. Okay, but I wonder if like the, the the Williamsburg crew, like from that show Girls, like that, like like the hipsters, are they on that Brooklyn bullshit? No. Do you it's think over. hipsters are on that Brooklyn bullshit? No, they it's over. All that, right, so what else do you remember seeing? Who do you remember seeing perform in there? <sighs> we saw KRS do the bridges over. Like I think three or four times in a row. When, but like, when he first debuted it, we yo, was there. It was when the bridge is over. When the video was shot. Yes. We were there. Motherfuckers <laughs> were when they would play that fucking song in the club. Dun 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 dun. dun oh dun, man. Motherfuckers would go nuts. Right. And then they would mix the bridges over with South Bronx. I'm surprised yeah. the fucking place didn't there wasn't yeah, a riot. Yeah. KRS was a motherfucker. And it was like that really like, <laughs> yo, is Brooklyn in the house? Yep. Is the Bronx in the house? When KRS one said is the Bronx and then they would be like, is Queens in the house? Yeah. Like you Eruption. Every place would be you know where it would, do you remember Staten Island being mentioned? No, Staten Island wasn't never got mentioned until Wu Tang. Staten Island was not mentioned. No disrespect to anybody from Staten Island. Force but, MCs, but they, but it wasn't mentioned. Like it would be: is Brooklyn in the house? Is the Bronx in the house? Is Queens in the house? Yeah. Is 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 Uptown in the house? Yeah. Right? Am I yep. forgetting any? Maybe they'll say Long Island. Long Island yeah. in the house. It would be rowdy. We saw a chick. We were we, we went to go see. Uh, we didn't go see. Like they would just perform. We didn't right. know what the fuck was going on. But a, 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 a female MC, Sparky D. Brownsville. What was her her famous song? She was a DJ. She was under DJ Red Alert ninety eight point seven. Yeah, she made some shit with Red. I got an attitude. Yeah, no, was no that, that's Antoinette. That's Antoinette. That's yeah. Antoinette. I don't know the fucking song off the top of my head. If it's I, with I, Red. Yeah, yeah I it's with Red Alert. Yeah. But but we were watching her perform. Me, Gerald, now this, I think this was 87. We were watching her perform, and I remember saying to this fucking guy, now we're, we're, we're kids, yo, I feel hot. He's like, yo, just chill. He's like, nonchalant. I'm like, yo, I feel hot. No, 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 nothing. I get fucking nothing. The next thing you know, I wake up in a bathroom and people are throwing water on me. Yeah. I fainted in the club fainted. while Sparky D was on the fucking stage. Yep. And they fainted. had to like carry me we into carried the, you to the fucking bathroom. I thought I got beat up or something. <laughs> and 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 you're like, why would you think that? Because it was a reality. We would see people get the shit beat out yeah. of them. Ice grill. People skid their faces slashed. Buck and, 50 across and, the grill. And girls getting their earrings pulled out of their ear. Not just one time a night. I have to explain. It wasn't just like, oh, I saw that once. That was like every weekend. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's that a disturbing it. thing to see. Yeah. And the party, the turntable's still rocking. They never stopped. Yeah. They didn't think about stopping. <laughs> it, it was never a consideration of the, is the music going to stop. Right. No, it, it was like, I was like a fucking drag them out and then like, yeah. you, like that was keep it, it going. They, they keep it going. Yeah. 
We should get MC Search on this shit. Remember we saw Search. We saw Search. He had the eight ball jacket on, the high top fade, and the fucking and the glasses. fucking glasses. I saw him many times. He when we first met during Z Bread, like we knew each other because I, I knew him. I knew him before he was Michael Search. I knew him as that white dude who was in the club, and he knew dancing crazy. I was, yeah, he was doing all that shit. Yeah, and he knew me. I, like you, you had to like. Yeah, that's the only other white motherfucker yeah. in the club. Yeah, and Search is a Jew prick just like me. Yeah. <laughs> So 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 we were in there and shit. So uh, <clears throat> all right. So so one more moment, like where we were like, oh shit. When I came out here for the first time when I was fourteen, fifteen, eighty five. Yeah, me coming from Brooklyn to be visit you in Los Angeles and, 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 and never we would, been. We would go to the Improvisation, the comedy club. Oh man, and we used to see uh, fucking Keenan, uh, Ivory Wayne's, right. and Damon Wayne's when they was like. But when they were just regular comics, we yeah. watched them on stage and shit. Yeah. At the improvisation. Robin Williams. Robin Williams many times. Yes. We would see Robin Williams at the club. And we're kids. We're seeing many, many, many times. Like up on stage late at night, there'd be six or seven people in there. Yep. Bill Maher. Bill Maher. We're kids. Rodney see. Dangerfield. Yep. Yep. Uh, Jerry Seinfeld. Yes. Larry David. Remember we would see Larry David in yep. there? He was just a regular comic at the improv. Johnny Carson, uh, that was like the big Jay Leno we would see in there. George Wallace. George Wallace all the fucking time. Yeah. Fucking Bill Maher. Yeah, man. That fucked me up because yeah. I'm from the project, so I didn't uh, expect for that. And, and this is when seeing stars... Uh, it, Bruce it's not Willis. Like Bruce Willis. We, we when Bruce Willis was on Moonlighting, he was at the Improv, and we were there, like you know, chilling and shit. Yeah. Because my sister, her stepfather was one of the owners of the Bruce. That's why we had the access. So we were in there late at night, inappropriate hours and shit. Cool J came. LL through. Cool J came to the Improv when he was LL Cool J. Radio when that album Radio. And he was like, and we saw him there. We were like, oh shit. Yeah. Fuck, man. Who, who, did you ever see Eddie Murphy in there? No. I remember I saw him in there once. I was like, oh. we saw Anthony Michael Hall in there. Yeah. When he, like, Weird Science, yeah. Breakfast Club, Anthony Michael Hall. I think he was, he was on that shit back oh, then. Oh, he was on that, that snow. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Shit. So, yeah, that was crazy. We have a, do we have that Bruce Willis photo? You have it. The photo of me, you, you and have Bruce Willis. Yeah. We, we have to try to find that and post that shit. Yeah. But we have a, a, a picture we'll post from, from being at the Improv in 85. Because the Iron Rapport podcast and, 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 the, and, the, and the Michael Rapport, I hate to talk about myself, but our relationship, me and G Moody's relationship, it goes back. That's why you can't fuck with the Iron Rapport yeah. podcast. American Giant sponsors the I Am Rappaport podcast. Go to American-Giant.com. Check it out. T-shirts, sweatshirts, American-made, American-manufactured, really good quality, soft, rugged, hoodies, sweatpants, all of it. AmericanGiant.com. American-Giant.com. The slogan for American Giant that we created is American Giant Clothing. Champion. Can't fuck with this shit, yo. Uh, this is the Iron Rapport podcast. What else, Mr. Moody? Uh, we, we, you know, we can't get into the whole history of Moody and Rappaport. Yeah, we don't go. Yeah. We can't go into all those things. I wish there was footage of how good Gerald was in basketball. Like, this motherfucker could play ball. Like, this guy could play. Like, he played with the best. Like, he was at that level. I just don't, I think it came too easy. Like, you never thought about, like, taking it to the next level. But G. Moody... The name rang bells for a short period of time in New York. He played with Kenny Anderson. Who else? Wait, let's go back to Kenny Anderson. Kenny Anderson. Remember, Listen. let's talk about Kenny. Yo, the first, all right, when was the first time you saw Kenny Anderson? Kenny Anderson, if you don't know who he is, former NBA player, considered the best high school basketball player ever. ever. He played, he's the same age as us. I met Kenny Anderson when I was 12 and he was 11, right. playing ball. And he was a lot better than me. I, I saw him. In the Madison Square Boys Club. Madison Square Boys Club on the east side of Manhattan. First time I'm coming from Brooklyn, I'm thinking I'm pretty good. See this fucking little kid. Like, would, it would, see would, him. Now, low little kid. Top, low Chop Chuck Taylors. Nah, nah, I don't think he had. I saw him play with so Low you, Top you Chuck Taylors. You was before Taylor. me. Yo, he bust my ass with <laughs> Low Top Chuck Taylors. And maybe they were High Top Chuck Taylors. Kenny, you'd have to verify what you played in. But they were Chuck Taylors. Yo. And they weren't Chuck Taylors like, oh, I'm rocking Chuck Taylors. Like, like, yo, that was like the sneakers he had. Right. And he was on some shit. Yo, so for me to see him dribble with both hands, both balls, like that Steph Curry shit. The, the shit you see Steph Curry doing, Kenny Anderson was doing that shit when At he was 11. 12. <laughs> 
That's real talk. He was like a fucking freak. Yo. Like he had a ball. Like he had the total control of a basketball at 12 years old. Yo. You knew he was going to. Like I you knew, knew like, he was going to be in the league. Yeah, you knew at 12. And then they're like, what do you mean? Like, yo, you knew at 12 years old Kenny Anderson was going to play professional basketball. Yeah. Like it was known. Like he was that good. Yeah. Does that make sense to you? Like you knew. He, he First was, time I saw him. I dribble knew. and play. You could make, he, he yeah. was like a professional. He's At a profession, 12, he yep. was like a professional. Like he handled the ball like a professional basketball <laughs> player. Fucked my head up. Were. And Gerald was really good. And yeah. I was big. Yo, when I, I, I saw him, he fu- I went back to Brooklyn and I was like, yo, I, I, I'm not what I thought I was. Yo, I played him one-on-one. And I remember I would play dudes one-on-one because I was left-handed, I was tall, and being lefty at that right. age is an advantage because it's hard to block. I had never lost a one-on-one. I right. played one-on-one with Kenny Anderson. That motherfucker busts my ass, and he used his right hand, which was his weak hand. And after we played, he said, now I'm going to use my left. Oh. And I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> it was like, no, no, no. It was like, a, I knew, yeah. like, yo, this guy was on another fucking level. He was level. an NBA guy at 12. Yo, and then you'd <laughs> see him, like, Kenny Anderson in high school, like, you'd hear about him. It was like, you, you, there wasn't, like, YouTube. There wasn't internet shit. But you'd hear, like, he's, he was here, he scored 50. He played here, and then he played another yeah. game. in the same way, there was, like, a, a, a few people. We're talking about Kenny, but, like, you know, there was a few people you'd hear about that obviously Lloyd Daniels but Kenny Anderson uh, watching him play oh. it was fucking crazy no. and, and it wasn't just that he was good there was no dunking it wasn't like he was a freak athlete like he was super tall he wasn't particularly fast right nah. like he was quick and he was you know he handled but it was like he just had a skill set like yeah. he wasn't like you know one of these 13 year olds who like you watch footage of LeBron he's dunking and shit like yeah. that or Corliss nah. Williamson dunking at 13 and breaking a backboard yeah. like he was our size skating he was just in, on another <laughs> level. I yeah. played on a fucking team with him. Yo, that you mother... Just tell me. Yo, he yeah. came in the game, and it was like... He only played a few minutes because I think he was young. I don't know why he didn't play the whole game. He was the best player in the fucking... Like, if Kenny Anderson was in a 300-mile vicinity, he was the guaranteed the best, best player player-in yeah. 300-mile vicinity. Right. And we're talking about New York City when there's Malik Seeley, there's older dudes, there's Paco Scurry, there's... Paco Screen, Carlton. Carlton Screen. Yeah, Paco. There, there's, BJ. There's, there's BJ Carter. James there's, Carter. We're oh, forgetting so many, like, right. you know, I mean, there's... There's guys like Gerald that don't have a nickname. Like there's, and he was the, a man among boys. Yeah. At 15, he was the be- at 13, 14, yeah. he was the best. Best, best. Kenny Smith will tell it. Yeah, like he talks about that shit. Kenny Smith and him grew up in the same neighborhood. So left rack. We're just throwing like little historical I am Rapport podcast shit. I don't know. What, 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 let's do one more and then we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll, we'll shut this. Oh, podcast you do. Around. I just did uh fucking uh, basketball. You you Kenny Anderson uh. Fuck man, what else? shit. I don't know. I mean, this shit. I don't know. How's your How's your Casper mattress? Is your back good? Yo, I have absolutely no problems. Casper right. mattresses are a motherfucker. Yo. My Casper mattress showed up in a box. I, I I cut open the box. They give you some kind of cutting device. It comes with, and then the fucking mattress expanded on its own. Not a blow up mattress, and 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 and, and then. I put it on the bed. I threw that other piss piss mattress out. Yeah. Threw it right out the fucking window. There's so many fucking homeless people around, and they fucking took it out. It was gone they, in like 35 minutes. It's on Skid Row now. It's on sir. fucking Skid Row being used. And it's, a, it's a good mattress, but it ain't a Casper. I put the sheets on that Casper, and it's just unprecedented what goes on on that fucking Yo, thing. Yo, my back is fucking good, man. Did you see me out there balling a little bit? Uh, no, we are no, no. Listen, 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 listen. No, your you, your bowling was good, but I, the thing that I like about you, uh, uh, since you've gotten on your Casper, is you don't. You, I don't hear this. Ah, oh, fuck my fucking back. That's like, right. Like I, I haven't heard you say my fucking That's back right. since you had a Casper mattress. And if you want to get a Casper mattress, you go to Casper.com. And if you put in the promo code Rappaport, not only do you already get an already cheap mattress, but then you save 50 fucking bucks. And, and, and you, like G. Moody, will never be saying, ah, my uh, fucking uh, back. Yep. My fucking back hurts. That's right. And, and, and you feel like, you know, it, it's a fun bed to sleep in. Like, you know, like I'm saying, like, is, is, is your fuck Yo, style buck wild I, in your I, mattress? I, I, yeah, I like the ladies. They like it. The bed is The ladies firm. like the mattress, right? Yeah, they know. Ladies like Casper mattresses. Yeah, Guys, if, if, if you're trying to impress your lady and you want to have a comfortable evening, Casper mattresses, they do big things. We spend a lot of our time sleeping. Yo, we spend a lot of time sleeping. What well, what's the what, what do you want to leave out of here on? One moment okay. that you said. Okay. 
when you and I were little kids in L.A. throwing eggs oh. at people and the cops caught Here's us. Here's a story we're going to tell you. You tell it. This is a good story. You could chime in. In 1986, I was 16. I just got a... I, don't, I didn't have a license. I just learned to drive. And, and, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll call her my stepmom or my godmom, Joanne. She, she is a, just a big part of my life. She's, it's my half-sister's mom. But we were, we were living with her and her husband, Mark, okay, in the summertime. And, 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 and me and G. Moody, this is 1986, we fucking, we fucking stole the Trans Am. They were out of town. We, yeah, they yep. were away. Yep, we had so the we, Trans Am. Can you imagine me and G. Moody <laughs> were, were, were alone in 1986? Why would they leave us in the house alone I for know. two or three days? You, they got, so they just, Joanne, yeah. I, you deserve to get your fucking Trans Am taken. Two New York motherfuckers. And we're 16. <laughs> so we take the fucking Trans Am out for a fucking joyride. Word. And we're driving around all over Los Angeles. We, now, there's no MapQuest. There's no, um, there's no fucking Google Maps. There's nothing. So not only, we're not from here. I can barely fucking drive, okay? Yep. I can barely drive at this point but but on top of that we don't know our Where ass from we, we know our, like a three block vicinity yeah. okay so we would just drive anywhere like if we wound up on sunset boulevard we wouldn't know how to get back we didn't know whether like if yep. we wound up on Cr crenshaw boulevard we just wound up there yeah like if we wound up downtown we wound, we wound up there like there. we yep. would just drive <laughs> and then when, when at a certain point we would start asking for directions to get home because we didn't know how to get home like when the joyride was over that's that's real shit that's real but one night in 1986 or it might have been 87 we stole the fucking the the, the fucking car that we went out for another joyride because at this point it was like Risky business. Yep. Another movie, Risky Business, where when Tom Cruise is left alone, like at this point, like we're just driving around in a car. <laughs> we would, we would, we now again, we never knew how to get home, or yep. we we never knew how to get anywhere. But we would just, it was like risky business for yep. like for two days. We have a Trans Am, a brand new Trans Am. Just driving. We're driving. So one night we're out driving, and and we, this is something we do. I don't feel proud of it, but we would go to the store. When we find one, because again, we like we we didn't know how to get to a store, but yeah. when you'd see a Seven Eleven or a bodega or a supermarket, we'd go in there and get eggs, and you know where this is going. And we would drive by and egg people. Yeah, the, the young, bus stops. the old, the the the, the, the innocent. Yeah, all well, over they LA. Were all innocent. I'm sorry. <laughs> We, they were all innocent victims, and we would we would catch them at bus stops. We would egg other cars. Yeah, <laughs> we were so dumb while we we're driving. It's so such risk. Like if the car was going the other way, we'd <laughs> egg it. This is two dumb fucks. Yeah, so dumb. And that's what frightens me about having teenagers, especially teenage boys. Because think about the reality of how dumb we were. Yeah, and think about the reality of how dumb we didn't know we were. Yeah, we yeah. were so dumb. And didn't know it. Teenage boys are the dumbest yeah. fucks. I can't speak on teenage girls, but I could tell you teenage boys, 99.9% .9 of them, 15, 16, and 17, you're at your dumbest. You, yeah, like, you're a dumb it's like motherfucker. You come out, you start to learn, and then your brain, it starts to heat or cool. Yeah. You're so dumb. You're so dumb. So we're driving around town, egging people left and fucking right. right. <laughs> left and fucking Hollywood, right. Hollywood, sunset. So sometime, somehow or another, we get to what is near, like the Sunset Strip. Yeah. And we, we, we get pulled over. Explain this. Because I want to get into the Ricky Schroeder sto story of it all. <laughs> I forgot about Ricky Schroeder. You, you, but you know <laughs> yeah. that. So we, so, but we went. I, we I got pulled over. We got pulled over by the cops. Probably because they were like, these are children driving right. a fucking Trans Am. And this is a busy Friday or Saturday or Thursday night. It was, we were in the hot, like the sunset strip. Trip. And we get pulled over into like a strip mall. And the cops get the whoop whoop. And we're like, like, I'm surprised I didn't, literally didn't piss myself. Yeah, me too. I don't have a license. Yeah. I don't have ID. I have, no, I have nothing to show for myself. <laughs> and you're like a little kid. A fucking kid driving yeah. a fucking Trans Am. Was right. it red or brown? Red Trans Am. Red? No, yeah. I feel like it was like brown. No, red. Maroon or some shit. Maroon, maroon. Yeah. Burgundy. Yep. Yeah. So dumb. And we get pulled into a strip mall and, and the cops go, what are you guys doing? And I go, listen. And, and I tell them I'm begging. I do my best white shit. Yeah. Like it's the kind of white shit that Rachel Dozell and I know how to do when right, we need to. Get, get a motherfucker like, out of the please, trouble. Please, can you help me? Yeah. I, and I'm really scared. I'm 16, but it's, it's the best white shit I could do. 
and, and, and the cop, you know, like it seemed like there's a lot of things going on. And the cop goes, all right. And, and then he goes, you have anything in the car? And we, we, we show him the eggs. The we show carton him of the eggs. The carton of eggs. And he makes us, he goes, all right, take those eggs and put them down your pants. And, and, and he makes me and Gerald split the, the eggs and put them in our pants. And then he goes, now smash them. Oh, yeah. So we had to smash the eggs in our pants. So, and, and right after that, he goes, now take this car and go the fuck home. Yeah. And then right after the guy leaves in the strip mall, in the peak of his stardom, in a blue sweater, it was a, it was a, it was a Carolina blue sweater. This is like in the Cosby era when like sweaters, like big sweaters were in. And Ricky Shorter's orange. And we grew up our entire life watching Ricky, Ricky Shorter. I loved him from the champ. Champ, get up, champ. Yeah. Get up, champ. Champ. That was one of the first movies. Champ, yeah, champ. I remember you used to tell me about that. <laughs> champ, get up, champ. Yeah. That's my Ricky Shorter impression. Come on, champ. Uh, no, Jackie, he's going to get up, champ. Come on, champ. And John Voight died in the sun. So we're seeing, so I've seen Ricky Shorter from that, from some Silver other movies. Spoons. And then Silver Spoons. And he's on Silver Spoons at this time. Yeah. <laughs> so Ricky Shorter is like, it's a big fucking deal to see Ricky Shorter. And we see Ricky Shorter and we're like, yo, shit, there's yeah. Ricky Shorter. And he's like, what's up, guys? How you doing? And we're like, yeah, nah, nah, nah. and we're like, yo, we got to go. And we're sitting there talking to him with broken eggs, eggs in our, our fucking pants. Ricky Shorter didn't notice it. Yeah. Maybe he did. I don't know. And obviously, See, and Ricky Shorter probably there's no way he would remember, remember because that, why yeah. would he remember that Yo. but we remembered meeting you Ricky, Ricky Shorter you word fuck up. you <laughs> and then we went home and it was a great night we had the fucking eggs in our pants yeah. and, but that was that was one of that was some classic LA Hollywood shit word this is the I Am Rapport podcast. I don't know, man. This is a good story. We're going to start peppering these, 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 these stories just to show that the, the I Am Rapport podcast bond is long. Has and, history. And historical. This is a historical document. You, we're, we're documenting history. Yes. We've been doing this shit since 82, 83. Just haven't been recorded. That's why you can't fuck with us. Word up. Okay. And anybody, any other podcast, we respect them. We love them. But if you want to play two on two, we take all comers. We like the Cold Crush Brothers against the Fantastic yeah, Five and Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're Cold Crush. We're coming at them. We're coming at you. We're like Mo D going after Busy B. Word. On that Ba Diddy Ba bullshit on yeah. hold. Yeah. Put that Ba Diddy Ba bullshit, bullshit on, on hold. hold. This is the Iron Rap Podcast.